What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we are talking about how to catch fish in shallow grass. Hopefully this works. The old uh, GoPro is not wanting to work. So I'm actually filming with my phone. So fingers crossed it doesn't fall off and nip in the lake, but um, fall fishing. We've covered <clears throat> where fish are going. We've, we've covered some of our favorite baits in depth. Hopefully you guys got to see the video just a few days ago where Matt and I, we caught them fairly well. We caught them pretty good. And most of those fish we caught in less than 18 inches of water. This time of year, those fish like to go shallow. And a lot of times they're going to be in and around grass. So how do you target those fish? Um, <clears throat> it can be really frustrating. This time of year could be some of the most frustrating time uh, of the entire year with fish blowing up on bait fish all around you and you can't buy a bite. You know, I'm talking to guys that are out there frog fishing and they're converting one or two bites out of like 25 to 30 blow ups, right? The fish get so dialed in on the bait that they are eating. It's almost, uh, impossible sometimes to get them to eat, but it's not impossible. So you guys got cut, got to cover water, um, and find fish that haven't been just pounded on. Right. We've all pulled into uh, a bay. Maybe we haven't. A lot of us have pulled into bays and you can just see the, just the bass just grenading in the grass mat and you throw your frog in there and they won't even sniff at it. Those fish have been pounded by every fisherman in the last, you know, mile or so that. they see that they see all that commotion they come and fish for them uh sometimes it's easier to find the little isolated grass patches that aren't as uh as visible but um we're gonna talk about all that here in just a bit but grass fishing this time of the year so we're not talking about the fish that are chasing the bait balls out deep we're not talking about really the offshore fish in your northern and lowland res uh highland and, and lowland reservoirs uh, we're talking about the backs of pockets. We're talking about like this flat out here. Deepest part of this flat out here is only like three foot. Obviously, there's a there's a creek channel on the back side that's deeper, and that's our boat channel in. But out here on this entire flat, three to five feet. So how do you find fish? So <clears throat> I literally will look with my eyes and I'm paying attention. I'm looking for little flickers on the surface. I'm looking for little uh, disruptions. Hopefully you guys will see these out here behind me as I'm talking about this video, but you'll see the little bait balls and you'll see the isolated grass patches. So if you pull into the very back of a bay and you're, and you're gonna fish the whole thing, a lot of times you can do two things. You can go to the very back, where it's where those fish are gonna corral the bait. In the very back, super shallow, like I said, you can't go shallow enough. I mean, if you're, if you're going to blow up over here, up on the bank, if you go in the very back and you throw your lure into just a couple inches of water and bring it out, I have had fish last year, Matt and I got on a bait, a bite where we were in less than a foot of water. We'd throw our lipless all the way up shallow and we would bring it to them and you would see the wake and their back come out of the water and, and hit that bait up on almost the dry land. Like I said, you cannot get shallow enough because those fish corral that bait and they hold them there. So if I go into the back of a, a, a bay, I'm either going to the very back. As I'm going in on my trolling motor, I'm going in quiet. I'm looking for any type of cover, say a, 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 maybe a, a brush pile. Uh, more importantly, I'm looking for the remaining grass. So this time of the year, let's talk about grass for a second. This time of the year, water temps are dropping, water levels are dropping. Uh, a lot of lakes this time of the year, they they drop them down to what they call winter pool. They drop a lake, you know, they'll drop this lake probably six or seven feet, which allows you to see the tops of the grass out in deeper water. But even furthermore, in the shallow water, it really, shows you where those grass patches are. So you nice could fish the entire grass. bay and then finally you get to that one isolated grass patch that still is lively, still is green grass. And that's where your bass are gonna be. That's where your bait fish or bait balls are gonna be swimming around, flicking around. 
Uh, that's the patch that you're going to want to throw your frog on, your top water on, uh, you know, flip your little bait in, whatever you're fishing. But that is where 95% of those bass that are in the back of that bay are going to be relating to that last remaining uh, lively grass. And I say lively because a lot of time this, a lot of time this time of the year with the water levels, uh, the levels dropping, the colder, the colder weather, a lot of that grass is dying. So we've talked about it in past videos. Uh, you might be in a bay with a whole grass mat. The whole thing is grass and it's dying. They're gonna continue to pull out of that grass to the livelier stuff, the little deeper stuff, the stuff that's still green, still producing oxygen, uh, still producing cover for them to ambush out of. Um, but as that stuff dies, they're gonna be in that grass. And then if you have hard cover, they're gonna pull to that as well. So if there's a little bit of a rock pile or or um, you know a brush pile, something like that, they'll be in that as well. In that last video that we did, Matt and I were catching those fish, and like I said, less than 18 inches of water. And that was a little different scenario. The, the entire little cove that we were fishing was covered in, in little short grass. But then there was a probably a 20 yard area that was just hard bottom. And those fish were sitting in that hard, on that hard bottom. So also look for stuff that's different. But for the most part, if you can find taller grass, that's where those fish are gonna be. And remember, if you're fishing a big cut with a lot of grass, look for the livelier stuff. You'll see it, you know, say you're throwing, you're throwing a lipless or something. You're throwing a bait fish imitating bait. So let's say an LV 500 and you're hopping it through and you're getting ground, uh, brown, just nasty grass, you know, get away from that stuff. Cause that, that stuff is dying. The fish don't like to be in it. So, you know, start fan casting. When you come back with that real green leafy stuff, the real uh, grass, that it, it's kind of that vibrant green. It just looks alive. Feel around with that LV, feel around with that lipless, figure out where that good lively grass is. I mean, if you have forward facing sonar, that will help too. Side imaging, you can, I mean, I typically don't go super shallow side imaging, but um, use what you can to figure out where that lively grass is. And that is where you want to, you know, predominantly fish. That's where you're going to make your casts. So we talked about uh, grass. If you are a deeper water fisherman and you say you're fishing, out here you know in that six to 12 foot range and there's still a real hard grass line that is good too those fish are going to pull into that grass and use it to ambush out of but you can throw your top waters over it you can throw your chatter baits your flukes also i'm going to cover some some of my favorite baits here in just a second but uh, fish those those grass lines because that's like a barrier that they're going to sit in and look out and ambush from um but the point of this video is don't be afraid to go super shallow. You know, um, like I said, that bite that we got on last year, the bite that we got on just a couple of days ago, those fish were so shallow, so shallow, uh, you wouldn't even think that those fish would be up there. And like I said, we've seen them where they're ambushing, their backs are coming out of the water to get the bait that you're bringing to them in even shallower water. So don't be afraid. If you're out pre-fishing, you're fun fishing, you're trying to figure out where these fish are, you know, fish your way into that bay, look for those isolated grass patches, and then go to the very back. Don't, you know, don't do it with your big motor, do it with your trolling motor. A lot of times you're gonna have to adjust your trolling motor up so you can get back there far enough that your prop's not even hitting. Um, you know, like I said, super shallow. So less than two feet of water, get all the way back there and take, if you wanna start on top, take your favorite top water, make a bomber cast, and you will be surprised at what eats on that second, third, or fourth twitch of that top water. Now with that said, let's talk about baits because um, a couple different ways to approach these super shallow grass fish. I keep saying shallow, I, I wanna really emphasize the grass because Finding that lively gra grass this time of the year is what's gonna hold those bait fish and it's what's gonna hold those bass. So let's talk about grass, shallow grass. Um, if it's not topped out and on surface, some kind of top water, either a frog or some kind of walking bait that looks like the bait fish. Now I, I'm gonna say, I, I grabbed one out, hands down, it's not even, uh, it's not even close. My number one frog this time of the year 
four fishing these scenarios that I pointed out. Super shallow grass where the fish are chasing bait fish. Uh, Threadfin shad is going to be the jackal kaiara. It is a smaller frog. It's it's really small. I mean, look at this thing compared to. Here's a gavacho. Very small. See, really, really small. And if I'm throwing a frog and I cannot buy a bite, I switch that little kaiara, kaiara, kaiara. They just mow this thing down. It's not intrusive. It's so much smaller than your traditional 65 size frog. Uh, if I am throwing a frog, hands down, that is my number one go-to frog. Now, I will start out with a gavacho um, or some kind of a uh, little bit heavier. I say heavier, a little bit larger frog because I can cast it farther. Um, this guy, because it is so much smaller, it can be a little bit harder to cast, especially on a extra heavy frog rod. So you might have to step down a power, go to a heavy. Um, but that Kara, dude, that, that thing just messes them up. So I'll start with a frog if it is topped out. If it's not topped out, I'm going to throw some kind of walking bait, right? Something that I can work, twitch, 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 bring it up to that grass that I can see, twitch, 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 get that thing, pause it right over their head, maybe a popper, something like that. That will bring those fish up. Another thing to, to really emphasize this time of the year is keep your eyes peeled. As you're fishing, you know, listen for blowups, listen for activity. Um, you know, say you're not in the back of a bay. Say you're along a, a, a grass line that runs a mile or two, right? We get them out here on chick. You know, there'll be several mile long grass mats. You want to be, as you're fishing, you want to be looking, look for blowups, look for bait fish. Let those fish tell you where they're at. That will help you out tremendously. It'll really limit uh, the amount of area you have to fish to actually get into the fish because you will find that in these vast grass mats there's key areas that hold the majority of the fish so don't want to get too much on a tangent on that sidetracked but so we talked about top water um this next one's hard because it's uh i'm gonna go with a lipless some kind of lipless that's that jackal tn70 last video we got them on a tn60 uh, that's more of like a bluegill kind of crappie pattern. Uh, here right now, this time of the year, we get the real small bluegills up up shallow. Um, if you are on a, a fishery that has a ton of shad that are up shallow, obviously obviously go with a shad pattern. You can go with a little blade bait, a little Domeki vault, um, you know, LV500. Here's that little TN smaller version. You know, it's been really weird the last couple of years. Um, not weird. It's been really obvious that you really have to match the hatch, the size, right? I mean, I've played around with little itty bitty swim baits. Look at this little spro, right? I am just trying to match the size of the bait fish they're eating. You know, you start throwing a full size top water when they're only eating two and a half, three inch uh, shad, you're not gonna get as many bites as you would if you were throwing the little 77 size or the 105 size, something downsized. That goes along with your lipless, right? Your lipless crank. So, so maybe go down to a smaller size. Um, on your square bills, go down to a smaller size. Again, it's matching the hatch. Um, that's that little BDS one. I've talked about that last, last few videos. They are available now. That's a bait that you can throw super shallow. Keep your rod tip up. It'll limit Go with a 12 to 15 pound mono as your leader. That'll limit the dive depth and you can fish and tick the tops of that grass in less than a foot of water. So a very shallow running crankbait. So we're, we're back in that scenario. We're in the back of the bay. We find the isolated grass patch. We fish that with our top water. Uh, maybe we flip it with a, a weightless Senko or something like that. And then we go to the very back where they have the, the bait corralled. You can see blow ups. Um, start with your top water. Then go with your lipless or your square bill, your little blade bait, your Domeki vault, and really pick that area apart. Because those fish, you can kind of paint that picture in your mind. Those fish are going to be lined up. I've seen it with my eyes. They'll be lined up and just pin that bait ball up in that bay. And they'll they'll stay there for a week or so. If the water you know recedes a little bit more, they'll back out. But they will use that back of the bay to, uh, to ambush those fish. And then again, that grass, um, that's where they will... Um, kind of back out to and and kind of uh, live, if you will. But 
Uh, the other day we got them on the glide bait. Matt was throwing the, the S waiver 168 and I was throwing that little TN, TN 60. Again, this is a bait that you can throw super shallow. Uh, here we have gizzard shad and, and uh, they get fairly big. So that's why he was throwing that guy. He was throwing actually, I think party crasher was the color he was throwing, but uh, don't be afraid to throw a swim bait shallow. Um, can make sure this phone's still recording. Um, but guys, grass fishing. Oh, one other bait I want to talk about. I got all sorts of stuff on here. I want to talk about a fluke. I don't know that there's a better weedless bait to throw subsurface um, than a fluke. You know, you can throw you can throw this thing up on the bank. You don't have to worry about getting hung up. You can throw the little super fluke junior. You can throw the different size flukes again to match the hatch. Um, match the size of the bait fish that they're eating. Some of this bait, it seems like microscopic, right? It's like an inch or two. That's why I'm going with those little tiny square bills, little tiny lipless cranks, little tiny baits. You can do the same thing with the fluke. Same thing with your top water. That's that little zip and ziggy. Look at this compared to, uh, there's a 105 uh, shower blows. Way, way smaller, um, but it matters, right? You're throwing your little swim baits, you're throwing your little 2.8s, your little three inch Kitex. Um, this is that little, that's that shad by Huddleston. Uh, such a cool little bait to throw, but that's fairly big when you're looking at some of these other baits that I'm throwing, right? So match the size if possible, but uh, getting back to the fluke, you know, you can throw this thing up on the bank, you can throw it in that grass and you can work this thing fairly aggressive and those fish will annihilate a fluke when they really won't eat anything else. You know, you throw that up there, maybe they'll eat like a weightless sinker, you throw it up to the grass and let it fall, hop it, let it fall. But with this fluke, I mean, you can do it with a traditional jerk bait too, but you're gonna get hung up, especially fishing shallow. But you throw this fluke out there with a super line hook on it, get it out there, kill it. Let that thing just kind of die down. Just get that thing going and they will just come unglued trying to eat that guy right there. But grass fishing, again, if we're talking, we're talking sun's going down, um, we're talking shallow grass. Uh, it's really, really hard to beat, obviously a frog on top and then some kind of um, soft plastic jerk bait because it is weedless. Now, if you're a guy that wants to throw uh, like a lipless crank, you know, or a blade bait, throw it out there, you know, hop it just enough to feel that thing vibrate just three or four or five times, let it fall and you know, they'll hit it like a jig or get that thing in the grass and then rip it out, right? Rip it out and as that thing falls, they're gonna hammer it. But those fish are gonna congregate in that lively grass. So as you're going into the backs of these bays or you're going out on these flats, you know, be looking, keep your eyes peeled for bait fish, ripples, blow ups, whatever, but also be wearing your glasses, looking in the water and finding those last remaining isolated grass patches. Guys, the fall is an amazing time to get out and catch a ton of fish. You'll see a ton of activity. You'll see fish, you know, cartwheeling over each other, trying to eat the bait fish. It's a, it's a really good time, a really pretty time to be out on the water, but go with reaction and move, keep your eyes peeled and you will find those bass. You find the bait fish, you find the grass, you will find the bass. I will link some of my favorite baits down below in the video description. Uh, with sizes and everything to make it easy for you guys. But uh, now is a fun time to be out on the water. A lot of guys have put their pleasure boats away, their wave runners, their jet skis, whatever. Uh, and now you get to go fishing. The, the ramps aren't crowded. The scenery is beautiful. You got those cooler nights, cooler weather, cooler water, and those fish are feeding up. Look for that lively grass, throw some of these baits, and you guys will catch some fish. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. I will try to get to those as soon as possible. As always, thank you for watching. I'm fingers crossed that this video is gonna work on my cell phone. I've never done that before. I'm not sure why the actual GoPro's not working, but hopefully I don't have to shoot this video again. But as always, guys, thank you for watching. Matt and I appreciate the support. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys on the next video.